Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, why do junior programmers get so fixated with the amount of time they spend on things and how is it that they are getting so fixated with the quantity of code they produce as opposed to the quality of So let's get into it. I think this is a pretty good question and I'll try to give you my perspective on this. I mean, each programmer is individual, but I can give you the red thread that I've seen so far. Now, the first and foremost thing that we need to consider here is that a person who very often has this need to talk about how long something takes, it usually falls into two, to some, into two buckets. Usually the juniors that I talk to, they are either very keen on telling me how much time they spend on programming, on how much time they invest in the development of their, their, themselves and their craft, right? Now, the reason for this is because to quite a lot of people, the amount of time that you invest in something is usually an indicator that you have skills or that at the very least that you are very invested in the thing that you are doing. I mean, if you tell somebody that you work out once a week, nobody's gonna care. But if you tell somebody you work, work out twice a day, now that might get some people, you know, to raise their eyebrows. This is the sort of thing that I'm talking about. And the problem here is that I have to bring you back to reality here, guys. I'll just tell you this, although it is a good indicator that you invest a lot of time in your craft, the amount of hours you spend needs to translate into results, into quality. The reason why, you know, professional athletes train so many, 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 many hours a day is not because, you know, they're kind of just after that magical number that, oh, I've worked out this amount of time or that amount of time. That's completely pointless. What's pointless is that the, res the results that you get from investing that time. So a lot of juniors that I see, talk to who have this idea. They spend their time watching a few tutorials or they write some toy API stuff of this nature. And the thing here is that you will get to a point where time doesn't really matter. Because if you're just doing the same things over and over, you're not actually going to advance your skill set. You're just going to stagnate and keep the same level. Programming is a very similar activity to weight training you need to increase the resistance. It's about quality. You start out by investing a set of like a, a certain amount of time and then you increase the resistance and you increase your quality you know in the same in the same way right. Now the other perspective here is that they feel, a lot of you know ask about when it comes to time investment they talk about things such as I feel like I'm slow. I'm taking too much time when I am working. Or that they're very keen on knowing like how long should a given task take. You see, the issue here is that it comes back to this idea that the time that you take in order to achieve a certain goal is somehow a measurement of your skill. The problem, although it is true to a point where this, there's this subjective idea that a programmer should take this amount of, you know, a rough, roughly this amount of time to solve a given problem. Now the issue with this mindset, and I'm sorry to say that that's a mindset that's not going to go away. It's going to take you quite a bit of time until you get to a certain com comfortable, like you need to get comfortable in your own skill. Basically it comes with experience. You will get to this point where you realize that the each problem that you're solving is going to be different and therefore it's very hard to predict exactly how long something's going to take. In the beginning of things you're going to be extremely sensitive towards people who give you this sensation that oh you're kind of slow on this or you're going to feel this need to either justify to other people that you're taking a lot of time or you're going to make false promises when everybody's, you know, whenever your projects or your stakeholders come into the room and they ask, are you done with this yet? You're going to get that sensation that Ooh, this feels bad. I don't want to tell them that I'm not really done. And you, you'll just tell them this. You will say this ma these magical words. You will say, oh, yeah, sure. It just, it, yeah, it's very, it's very almost done. I just need to fix a tiny little thing. Same thing when they come and ask, can you fix this? And you go, yeah, immediately, because you want to accommodate and 
get that sensation that you can produce at the pace that people are expecting of you. The problem with this is that each person expects a different amount of results from you and that's up to the stakeholders to determine and you know when you you know that you're settling in you, to your role as a programmer when you can very calmly say that it's going to take th roughly this amount of time and feel comfortable in saying that regard and not really reflect so much how the other person is interpreting uh, interpreting that information because more often than not, I know that this doesn't make this sensation go away, but guys, most of the time when your stakeholders are asking you how much time do you need, they're not really so interested, like they're not trying to judge you as an individual. They're trying to extract information because they need to plan stuff. And planning means that they need to know how long it takes. It's not about you, it's about the project. Anywho, the reason why this phenomenon exists is because of, you probably guessed it, inexperience. And the same thing goes with lines of code. I mean, if you really think about it, why does the amount of code matter at all? It used like it was a long time ago since we evaluated programmer skills based on the amount of code they wrote. Today, that's not the case anymore, but we still have quite a few of these junior developers who seem to believe that that I, you, because you don't understand what it is that you need as a developer in order to produce the sort of results that people are looking for, like what the industry is looking for, you latch on to these very easy concepts that are very true in other, you know, in other areas. As I said, why, are you, why do you care how long something takes? Well, because you want to feel that you're fast. But that's a relative thing. If I'm asking you to develop a to-do application or I <laughs> ask you to solve the, uh, the search algorithm problem for Google or something like that. I mean, the, the time something takes stands in proportion to the task at hand. The same thing goes for how much time you invest. Each of us is different in, you know, and we all need different circumstances to succeed. So how if you spend, if some, one person spends four hours achieving the same sort of, or, well, practice for four hours and somebody practice, practices for eight hours, that doesn't really matter. What matters is the end results, how well you actually progress within your own skill set. So what I'm basically trying to tell you here that the reason why you have all these sensations and all these insecurities, it comes from that you don't actually know yet what truly matters. And I am very sorry to say that that's something that you learn with experience. And I, but I want you to know that this is something everybody goes through, guys. Feeling like you're slow, you don't progress for fast enough, or feeling like you know you're making these mental mistakes that you think that all right, you spend X amount of hours on something and then you feel good about yourself, but at the end of the day, somebody next to you spends half of that time and then they feel as if they're as far ahead as you are. All of these things is part of maturing as a software developer. So what I want you to take away from this is that the reason why juniors have this tendency to focus a lot on quantity of code they produce or how fast they are or how much time they invest, like if they sit every single day and stuff like that, these are mental ghosts that you have because you don't feel secure in your role. And when you feel secure in your role, you will start to understand that these things don't actually matter. It do, the world champion, is, as we go back to the strength training type of comparison again, the strongest man in the world doesn't have to work out as much as the next guy, who is like the second strongest man. They don't have to have the same training regimen. What matters is the results. So if you, if you don't feel like, as an example, spending, 10 hours every single day learning programming, you don't necessarily have to just because the next person is. You just have to, as I said, find a way for you to actually get to the point where you have the skills required to work within the industry. And that is a very individual journey. And that's a journey that you have to do by yourself. You have to figure out what works for you. And when you do, you will start to see these results. And once you have that sensation, as I said, when you can tell other people 
you know, this is going to take this amount of time or you, that you don't feel the need to impress other people with your devotion to coding. That's when you start to become a real professional. Have a great day.